Never has there been a noteworthy enterprise that hasn't had its share of challenges. And in this case, not the death of a construction worker, the hurdles of how to demolish a 52-storey office tower in the heart of Midtown Manhattan. Not controversy and criticism from architectural critics crying foul, the need to seamlessly integrate with the existing urban fabric and infrastructure, or even environmental concerns and constraints, such as the presence of the Metro North Rail Lines under its foundations, have been enough to halt the birth and progress of this superstructure, known as JP Morgan's 270 Park Avenue. It is aptly termed a superstructure for all its super features, from its super height of 423 metres and 60 storeys to its super high standards in sustainability, health and wellness. Not only that, the building towering at a staggering height of 1,425 feet stands as an iconic addition to the iconic New York City skyline. Its $3 billion construction cost is made necessary for its modern engineering and architectural design, as well as its state-of-the-art technology. The skyscraper is expected to be New York City's largest all-electric tower, sourcing its 100% renewable energy from a New York hydroelectric power plant. There is more to this impressive feat than these. Picture a 60-storey tall building, lifting itself 24 metres or 80 feet above ground level, balancing on a series of fan column structures and triangular bracings that serve as its foundations. Now, imagine that said phenomenal structure is projected to produce net zero operational emissions and has successfully reused, recycled and repurposed 97% of the materials from the demolition, which significantly exceeds the 75% standard requirement. What this means is that in the world of leading green building standards, JP Morgan's 270 Park Avenue is the greenest of them all. Although, it is priming to be a testament to the ever-evolving needs and aspirations of a city in constant flux, one that continues to reinvent itself while cherishing the echoes of its past. This innovative masterpiece that was first announced in February of 2018 is projected to be complete in 2025. Meanwhile, another iconic building had just been completed on the same site in the year 1917, called Hotel Marguerite. After the construction of Grand Central Terminal in 1913, which covered rail lines that ran up and cut through the middle of Park Avenue, the now fashionable Terminal City area was ripe for investment, spurring development in the surrounding areas. The Hotel Marguerite was one such development, located on the site of the present day 270 Park Avenue. Developer Charles V. Paterno built what was known in its time as the largest apartment building in the world, complete with 110 luxury suites, 109 apartment units, 29 retail spaces, and a restaurant on the ground floor. It also boasted a 275-foot courtyard with a private driveway, occupying the entire block between 47th and 48th streets on the south and north, Madison Avenue to the west and Park Avenue to the east. The stone-clad Hotel Marguerite, at its time of completion in 1917, was a massive U-shaped building complex built in the Renaissance style and was 12 storeys high. While it was a raging success in its time and housed several high flyers, it also had its share of unfortunate occurrences, like a fire that killed two people and a homicide. By 1944, plans for the replacement of the hotel began to surface. However, that did not pan out. Maybe it was holding out for what was yet to come. In 1955, Union Carbide Corporation a chemical company announced its plans to transform the hotel into an office building and by 1957 demolition had commenced. This development was spearheaded by architects Natalie de Blois and Gordon Bunshaft and rather than following the crowd, Union Carbide made the unpopular decision to keep their headquarters in the city, even though many other businesses were moving to the suburbs where it was more spacious and quiet. The commencement of the new 52-storey project was met with its own challenges, not very different from the ones being faced today, although, maybe not to the same degree, demolition had to be done carefully and bit by bit. Considering the train tracks that ran underneath the building, another challenge they faced was that it was an already developed area with thriving businesses and residential areas. And so it began. Stone walls were replaced with steel and glass and because of its locational constraints, there was majorly no basement. Rather, it had column footings installed between active rail tracks. Not just that, the columns were set on vibration pads to counteract the vibrations of over 500 trains that passed by every day. 
The sleek tower of glass, stainless steel and black sandwich panels also had the ceiling system, integrated lighting and air conditioning, an ultra modern feature for its time, which made it stand out amongst its contemporaries. Later on, the Union Carbide building could no longer house its staff of 3,500, so the corporation finally moved to Connecticut in the 1970s. This, however, did not spell doom for the iconic 270 Park Avenue. It would seem that the 270 Park Avenue was meant for great things. Right after Union Carbide's exit, renovations began again, but this time for the former occupant's neighbours, Manufacturers Hanover Trust, looking to relocate its headquarters. The new tenants' requirements for the project, which was handled by the same architectural firm, presented the unique challenge of retrofitting a classic, modern skyscraper to accommodate new programme requirements introduce contemporary technology and promote energy conservation with compliance to new and emerging standards. This included removing the mezzanine levels, the addition of two fountains to the plaza and refurbishing interior ceilings, floorings and fixtures. This would mark the end of a major renovation and structural alterations on the building for a while, even though transitions and mergers continue to occur, with Chemical Bank buying out Hanover Trust during the financial crisis of the early 90s and making it their headquarters, and later on, through several mergers, JP Morgan came into the scene. The turn of the new century ushered in a need to out with the old and in with the new, and so the developers of the Union Carbide building, in a bid to keep up with the changing times, announced their plan to build a state-of-the-art office tower. This was met with some criticism, as well as applause. After years of planning and rigorous design iterations, demolition commenced in 2015, marking the beginning of an ambitious project that would redefine the city skyline. Through innovative engineering solutions and meticulous planning, architectural design firm Norman Foster and Partners found ways to overcome the numerous hurdles the project would face. Every new feature of the 270 Park Avenue building is cutting edge. Even the glass and steel exoskeleton that the previous version featured has distinct new features that make it progressively peculiar. Unlike traditional skyscrapers that rely on a central core to carry their bulk, this marvel employs a dire grid system, an intricate lattice of steel columns and diagonals providing both lateral and vertical support, making it possible to have column-free floor plans in the interior. This unique feature allows the hulking giant to lightly touch the ground like a ballerina standing on point. What this means is that it creates an unobstructed view of the entire streetscape from Park Avenue extending through to Madison Avenue, not only for the aesthetic appeal, but also for the much needed wider pedestrian sidewalks, providing more than double the outdoor spaces on the ground level of both avenues. And in keeping with the transport infrastructure of the city below it, not only that, it makes room for a large public plaza on Madison Avenue, with natural green spaces and other amenities catering to the needs of residents, workers and visitors who frequent the neighbourhood on a daily basis. Another impressive thing to note is that inside 270 Park Avenue offers over 2.5 million square feet of premium office space spread across 60 floors. Each level boasts expansive open plan layouts providing flexibility for various workspaces. Floor to ceiling windows offer breathtaking views of the city skyline while state of the art building systems ensure optimal indoor air quality and thermal comfort for the occupants. It nearly doubles the size of the original building, providing 14,000 new employers a radical upscaling of the demolished and upcycled 1950s build. Designed for approximately 3,500 employees, talk about upping your game, 270 Park Avenue is truly a thing of beauty. Its sleek elegance seamlessly integrates with the new surrounding urban landscape, creating a harmonious interchange between the old and the new. The exterior masterpiece of glass and steel, with intricate patterns and geometric shapes, plays with the light and the shadow creating a lively and ever-changing visual experience as the day progresses. The new and improved 270 Park Avenue will have no gas line connections whatsoever, owing to its all-electric nature that relieves it from any entanglement with the city's local laws. While providing clean, sustainable energy, the building's slender and tapering form not only adds to its striking visual appeal, but also optimises its performance in terms of wind resistance and energy efficiency. It also applies technology that enables it to minimise the amount of artificial light consumed, reduce the building's draw on the city's municipal water supply and extensive use of AI monitors and controls to adjust all aspects of the building interior environment, including the solar shading incorporated into the triple glazed exterior facade that captures and replicates natural light. The building stands as a testament to human ingenuity, perseverance and an unquenching pursuit of excellence. If ever you are found looking at its towering form, 
or even within its glass walls. You can't help but be awestruck by the sheer audacity of its design and the technological marvel that it is, considering that its construction took place in the heart of one of the world's most densely populated cities. The concept for the new design, which was to create a timeless addition to Park Avenue that celebrates New York's rich architectural history and serves as a symbol for future work, quite frankly deserves all the praise. As we all look forward to its completion, it should make us hope that this is the future of building.